hands. Welcome to this wonderful time together as we celebrate Easter. Welcome to part two of our Easter presentation, Jesus Saves, Redeemed. Now, if you didn't see part one, the video is available on this page. Uh, it's a good time to send us some likes or hurts, uh, hearts, <laughs> sorry, if you are being blessed by the presentation. Now, if you haven't done it yet, now is a good time to share this with your friend or tag them on the chat and they can enjoy watching with you. Now today we are celebrating Easter Sunday. Uh, what does Easter mean to you? To many people, it's just a long weekend to enjoy the good weather and have barbecue with family and friends. Now, unfortunately, there is really no long weekend anymore because many have lost their jobs or they're working from home and, you know, uh, and some are not even working anyway because of the pandemic. Now, also, depending on where you live, there are no places to go because we are all locked down in our homes and not able to gather with friends and family. Um, friends, especially here in Ontario, with the province-wide shutdown. Now, others also celebrate Easter with uh, egg hunts and chocolates and decorate their homes with bunnies. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having fun, but the truth is, Easter is not about bunnies, eggs, and chocolates. Easter is about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today, the whole world is still in a pandemic after a year claiming millions of lives and millions affected more, uh, more infected. Um, many people are still in lockdown and are not able to go out and gather with their loved ones. But in spite of the bad news around us, there is good news, uh, that there is hope. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed and changed everything in our lives. Here's what Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Now, on a Friday, for about six hours, Jesus suffered in pain and carried our sin on the cross. Finally, about 3 p.m., He died and was buried. But on the third day, Jesus resurrected from the dead. He is risen. So we call this Resurrection Sunday. Today we celebrate our risen Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We celebrate today by having communion together as a family of God. So go ahead and gather your family in your home and get a cup of, uh, of grape juice or non-alcoholic wine and have some bread to share. And we will eat and uh, drink together in a minute. Now, more than 2,000 years ago, the disciples celebrated His resurrection by remembering Him through communion. Jesus commanded them to celebrate the Holy Communion until He comes. And so on the first day of the week, the Resurrection Sunday, the disciples had fellowship and ate together to remember what Jesus has done, that He died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day, rose from the dead. So today as a church, the body of Christ, we also remember Him as we have communion together. You are invited to partake in this communion with the Lord if you acknowledge what He has done for you. If this is your first time joining us, well, the bread represents the body of Christ that was bruised and broken and nailed to the cross. The juice or the wine represent the blood of Jesus that was shed so that our sins will be forgiven. His blood showed the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus to redeem us and reconcile us to the Father. In His blood, there is salvation. In His blood, there is healing and deliverance. In His blood, there is restoration and wholeness. So please take the bread. The Bible says that on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, this cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus said, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, remember what Jesus has done for you, that he took your place at the cross and saved you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for what you have done on the cross. Thank you for the sacrifice that you died for us. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was nailed to the cross and the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And so today, Lord, we just thank you. We acknowledge you in our lives. And Lord, we give you praise and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's eat and drink together. Now, friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds to hear the message from the Lord. Let's read the Word of God today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, from verse 1 to 8. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on a third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Jesus resurrected from the dead. Now why is resurrection so important? Well, because it validates Jesus' life and his teachings. He was who he said he was. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. It is now we know that Jesus is God. It brought the disciples to faith and explains the rapid growth of the Christian movement. Christianity was not founded on the made-up story of confused and desperate disciples, but in the historical fact of a risen Lord. There were eyewitnesses. The truth is the disciples saw that the, the risen Jesus Christ, in addition to that, the transformation of the disciples proved Jesus' resurrection. They had seen their master die, and through the death, they lost all hope. But that hope returned three days later. They saw him. They touched him. And since then, they were never the same. You know, Peter denied him at first because he didn't know. But when he saw him risen, he never de denied him again, even when it cost him his life. Now on the day of crucifixion, they were filled with sadness. But on the first day of the week, they were filled with gladness. At the crucifixion, they were hopeless. But on the first day of the week, their hearts celebrated with certainty. Therefore, they began meeting together and worshiping on the first day of the week when the message of the resurrection first came uh, they were hard to be convinced but once they became assured they never doubted again the only thing that could have transformed the lives of these men in just a few days is the reality that jesus came alive what we read today gives us a glimpse of what happened and like the disciples who were transformed, the reality of his resurrection power can forever change you and me. Throughout history of mankind, Jesus was the only one who resurrected from the dead. This proves that he is the Son of God and he did what he said he will do. So today we celebrate the fact that he is alive. God's not dead. Amen. 
Death could not hold him. Amen. And if you agree with me, send me an amen. Hallelujah. Or you can just type in, death could not hold him. Or you can say, God's not dead. You see, friends, why is this important? Well, the Bible says that the consequence of sin is death. That's eternal separation from God. All the sin of the world was put upon him. Your sin, my sin, your friend's sin, your relative's sin, the world's sin. All of our sin, all of your sickness and disease was placed upon him. You know that the prophet Isaiah even pro prophesied about this 700 years before Christ. In Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 5, it says this, Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The punishment of God was put upon him. Every imaginable sickness, yes, even coronavirus, was laid upon him. So by his wounds, we are healed. We receive both healing of our souls and our bodies. Jesus died and was buried. And just in case someone had a bright idea of stealing the body and claiming the resurrection of Jesus, a stone was rolled in front and guarded the body of Jesus laid there the first day in the natural realm it seemed that nothing was happening the second day passed and still his body was as dead as anything but on the third day when the fullness of time has come according to the divine plan of God God in heaven looked down upon his son and the Spirit of God rolled the stone, entered the tomb, and raised Jesus from the dead. He entered the body of Jesus Christ and gave life to that dead body. Acts 2.24 says this, But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Friends, death could not stop him. Death has stopped many religious figures in history. Muhammad is dead. Buddha is dead. And many others. They may have been good teachers and prophets and philosophers, but now they are dead. They could not break the power of darkness and death. There is only one, hallelujah, on the face of the earth that could not be held back by death. His name is Jesus, and He is alive he is not among the dead yes he is risen he's not just a good man he's not just a prophet or teacher he is the son of the most high god he is the king of kings and the lord of lords his name is above all names that at the sound of that name every demon in hell trembles every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord hallelujah he is the same yesterday today and forever and his kingdom shall never end hallelujah praise the lord yes yes go ahead and begin to praise him if you believe that say amen or message it or send some hearts I mean, just worship the Lord. Just praise Him for what He's done. God sent His Spirit to raise Him from the dead. Because Jesus is alive, we can put our faith in Him and live victoriously. Let me share with you some truths of the resurrection power of God that redeemed us. Redeem means to buy back. Jesus' death and resurrection paid for our sins to buy back our lives. Now, what does that mean when we have been redeemed? First of all, it's this. To be redeemed means you were saved from judgment. Jesus Christ died so that we will be saved from the judgment of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 10 says this. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's judgment. 
For since we were restored to friendship with God by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be delivered from eternal punishment by His life. Friend, the Word of God tells us that because of His great love for us, Jesus died and redeemed us. Now, why was it necessary to redeem us? Because our sins have separated us from God, and the consequence of sin is eternal judgment. But Jesus took our place, hallelujah, and delivered us from eternal punishment by His life. He is our Redeemer. Say that with me. He is my Redeemer. Or you can type it in. He is my Redeemer. The second thing is this. To be redeemed means you were set free from the consequence and bondage of sin. You were set free. Because Jesus redeemed you, you're set free. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. The resurrection of Jesus destroyed the work of the devil. You and I can live in the power of the resurrection. As children of God, we can reflect the Father. Every day we must live in the reality of His power. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy our life. But Jesus came to give us an abundant life. Jesus broke the power of sin in your life and set you free. You are no longer a prisoner of sin and death. You are free. <laughs> Say that with me. I am free. I type it in. I am free. Now, the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 13, tells us a beautiful story. It says this. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. The Lord set her free from sickness caused by the devil. I want you to know today that the Lord defeated the enemy on the cross of Calvary. You don't have to settle for the pain and suffering caused by the enemy, the devil. Yes, we may go through difficulties, suffering, and even sickness, but we will overcome. Through Jesus, you are an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. You are a champion. Your freedom is already set. Don't let the devil weigh you down again and keep you in bondage and give you fear. The Bible says whom the, sense, the sun sets free is free indeed. But thirdly, here's the thing. To be redeemed means your future is secured. Because Jesus redeemed you, you have hope and a future. In John chapter 14, verse 1 to 4, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Then he goes on to say in verse 6, basically he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by me. And you can hear even from the testimonies a while ago of what they've said of how God, or how Jesus Christ delivered them. That he was the only way. They've tried different things, but Jesus is the only way to reconcile us back to the Father and give us a future. So if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, you have a future that is secured. We have eternal life in Christ. Just as surely as Jesus came the first time, well, He will come again to take us. We know that we will spend eternity with Him. That eternal life starts now. It's not sometime down the road when you die. You can already enjoy the presence of the Lord today. So many people are trying to secure their future in the stock market 
or RSP investments without Jesus. Their future is in their career. But in this economy, their savings may even be gone. And even their career is gone. They're putting their hope even in their possessions, what they can accumulate in this lifetime. And now, that is not looking good. Their future is uncertain. This pandemic has shown us that we cannot depend on what we have and even on our career. What many don't realize is that this life, as we know it, will end. Then comes the judgment. Without Christ, we are separated from the promises and the blessings of God. But those of us who put our faith in Him will be with Him now and for eternity. Do you feel secure about your future? People who seem to be well all of a sudden get infected and didn't even have a chance to see their family and their life has been taken away. They didn't even have a chance to make it right with God. Now, I'm not trying to scare you or paint a grim picture. I'm talking about the reality of what is happening around us. But there is the good news. Jesus made a way for you to, so that you can be assured if you put your faith in Him. Not only when we die, but while we are alive, we have a hope and a future. Today we rejoice. Amen. He lives. And we have been redeemed. Amen. <laughs> now you might feel like you don't know what the future holds. That there's so much uncertainty maybe for yourself and your family. But I want you to know that He holds your future. Friends, this Sunday is the best day of your life. God is in our midst. This is not an accident that you're watching this broadcast or live stream. This is a, not an accident that you are right now listening to this message. God made a way for you to be listening to this. Thank the person who invited you for this. Uh, thank the person who sent you the link that they showed you that there is a message of hope. Friends, you should be thankful because this is the, the, this is the best day of our lives. God is with us. Because you have been redeemed, you have been saved from eternal judgment. You were set free, and your future is secured. Amen. Now, friends, the resurrection means nothing if you have not committed your life to Jesus Christ. Or you are not walking in His power. If you experience spiritual dryness or coldness, and you are fearful about your future, or even this pandemic of what's going on around us, it's time to recommit your life to Jesus. You know where your life is right now. If you are willing, He wants to redeem you, restore you, revive you, and make you useful for the kingdom of God. God is looking for those who are spiritually alive and willing to follow and obey Him. Some of you are probably not where you should be in your walk with God. You know it. You know in the very deep part of your body or your soul, you know where you're at. Friends, Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that you will have an abundant life. God wants to restore you. He wants to revive you. He wants to heal you. And the only thing that is holding you from receiving your inheritance and blessings is you. It's not the pandemic. It's not your job. It's not your family. It's not your church. It's not the government. It's not anybody else but you. You need to get to that point in your life where you will say, I am not going to allow the devil to steal God's promises from my heart. I'm not going to allow him to kill and destroy the plan of God for my life. And on this Resurrection Sunday, will you say, because I am redeemed, I'm going to believe God for my breakthrough. I will surrender my life to Him. I'm coming out of my situation. I will claim my healing. I will claim my breakthrough. Today, 
I want to give you that opportunity to be reconciled to God and walk in resurrection power. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus today, he wants you to belong to his family so you can enjoy the power of God in your life. Maybe you have a religion, but you really don't have a relationship with Jesus. Today, you can have that. Today, you can be redeemed. How do you do that? Well, you need to receive Jesus into your life. Well, very simple. This is how you can receive Christ in your life. First, acknowledge that you have sinned. It says in 1 John 1, 8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The second thing is believe that Jesus Christ can forgive you and save you from your sin. It says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 to 10, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we may make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. Friends, there is no sin that Jesus cannot forgive. No matter what you have done, Jesus can forgive you today. This will be a great resurrection Sunday. And if you have walked away from God and you've known him from before, this is a time to ask forgiveness and repent of your sin and come back to the Lord. This is the time that you can be restored in your relationship with him. There's nothing he cannot forgive. And thirdly, confess your sins and repent. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says this, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Just ask Jesus to forgive you. You need to acknowledge that. And you need to believe that. And then you need to confess it. And then lastly, decide to follow Him. Today you have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into your life. You may not have that opportunity again. So today if you're watching and you want to surrender your life to Jesus, I want to pray for you. Will you take a step of faith? Show a hands up or type yes and say that you know you agree with me that's what you want to do now if you're watching and you know that you are not where you should be in your walk with christ this is the time for you to recommit your life now if that's you i want you also to pray with me and i want you to show a hand or type yes go ahead there's millions of people around the world doing that right now now those of you who said yes I'm going to pray with you. Please pray with me this simple prayer. Repeat after me. You know, mean it from your heart. It's not so much what the prayer says, but really mean it from your heart. Pray this with me uh, and, 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 and do it uh, alongside with me right now. Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and you rose from the dead that I may have life. Now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, we believe that you were born again, redeemed by your faith in Jesus. Welcome to the family of God. Congratulations. Now, it wasn't hard. The Lord has forgiven you and given you a brand new start. All of your sins, everything you've done before has all been cleansed and wiped away and you have a brand new start. Now, if you have committed your life to Christ for the first time, please let us know. We would like to acknowledge you and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Tell your friend or relative or the person that invited you. It's a time of rejoicing. You know, this is a time that, that God came into your life. So tell everybody. Now also, we'd like you to fill out a connect card on the chat. And we will send you this package right here, okay? Now it has a, a small booklet, all right? And, uh, and also a, uh, a small uh, pocket-sized um, 
you know, uh, New Testament Bible. Now, this booklet will help you in how you can grow in your spiritual life. Now, so fill up the Connect card by clicking the link that is pinned on the chat. Now, our chat, uh, our host people, uh, our team is watching there, and they'll be there to help you. It will open, by the way, when you click it, it will open a new window while you are still watching. And don't worry, you can still listen to the video, watch the video, and you can fill up the Connect card, all right? Uh, it will still be there. So make sure you click the part that says, I receive Jesus in my life. And we will send you this package. Or also you can click the other ones that apply to you. Okay, so thank you for for letting us know. Now, I want to pray also, before I close, I want to also pray for those who are sick in their bodies. Now, if you are sick right now, I'm going to pray with you, or you want to stand in the gap for someone, we will pray together. The resurrection power of God that raised Jesus from the dead can heal you. I believe that. It's according to your faith. It's done to you. So I want to agree with you and join our faith together. I want you to touch the part of your body that needs healing, all right, whether it's your head, your arm, your back, your neck, wherever it is, your stomach, you know, touch that part, and we are going to join our faith together. Now, you know, friends, God is everywhere, right here, He's here in our midst, and He's also where you are watching right now. So we join our faith together, there's power and agreement. So right now, I want you to uh, pray with me, all right? So I'm, let me pray for you right now. If you're, those of you are sick in your bodies right now, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your healing power. Lord, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the, head, uh, from the dead is now li uh, living with us and to quicken our mortal bodies. And thank you, Lord, that you have defeated the devil, Lord God, through your resurrection. And today, we claim the resurrection power of God to heal our sickness. And I pray right now, heal right now, Lord God, that back pain. Lord, heal that neck pain. Lord, heal that cancer in the name of Jesus. Those that are sick with the coronavirus, oh God, in the name of Jesus, heal them. That they will be able to breathe properly. That their lungs will be restored in the name of Jesus. And God, protect them right now, oh God. Those that have gone through surgery in the name of Jesus, God, that your healing power will be upon them right now. And God, whatever, Lord God, the sickness right now, God, you know what it is, oh God. And so, Lord, we claim the healing powers. You have said, by your stripes, we are healed. And we claim that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. I believe that God's healing power is upon you. So trust and believe God for your healing. Do something with your arm or leg, or whatever you've not been able to do before, begin to do that. And we would like to hear from you. All right, again, make sure you do that. And by the way, don't go yet. There is still so much more, okay? So thanks for being with me, but make sure that you continue on because there's more coming. So listen to our host. God bless. If you've just decided to follow Jesus, congratulations and welcome to the family. We would like to encourage you in your spiritual journey, so we want to send you a special gift. We want to send you this package. It has a small booklet called Now What? and a pocket-sized New Testament Bible to help you with your journey. Pinned in the chat, you will find a link to a Connect card. Kindly fill out the Connect card, and we will follow up you after this weekend. Thank you, and congratulations. I just want to remind you also about our social engagement contest. It is still ongoing. So take a picture right now and post it on your social media, on your Instagram or your Facebook page. Remember to tag Champion Life Center and use the hashtag Jesus Saves 2021 Redeemed. This contest ends at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the winners will get a special prize, $25 gift certificate from Amazon. So right now, go ahead, take a picture of you watching our, our presentation and post 
hashtag Jesus Saves 2021 Redeemed. And before we move on with the rest of our presentation, we would like if you'd like to support our ministry and continue to share the good news of the gospel, there are a few ways that you can give to our ministry. You can text to give, give through our website, give through our mobile app, or you can e-transfer your giving. You can also visit our website at championlife.ca for more instructions. 